So I already solved this task without the recording, but if you kind of wondering how to solve it, then one of the possible solutions is just one line. And we can check that age is greater than 13 and the age is below 19. And that would be So there is a hint, hint for if else, but there is no need in if else if you want to solve it. Let's go to the next one. Okay, let's write it in the normal way. Let's say we have an integer difference is equal to zero. And then we're gonna return the difference back. And now we can say, let's say a is less than e, then the difference will be e minus a, and else the difference will be a minus b. Let's see if it works. Nice. Okay, let's go to the next one. Given integers a, b, c, return true if a and b add up to c. Okay, let's see if we can solve it again in one line. Return a plus b is equal to c. So the reason why I try to solve it in one line because for quite an easy tasks it's the best way to go. If you have more complex logic, like for example the number difference, then you should not solve it in one line because it's easy to get confused. Ask any order. Given three integers, return true if the Scanning the order for our first two equal numbers will be considered the same. Okay. What is the hint? Would evolve if else? Yes. So let's see if we can solve it again in one line. A is less than. Um, so I was thinking should be okay. Yeah, it should be equal b and then b is less than c. It works as well. Okay, so you can read it on your own. Basically, if here we can we we we, we see any of these letters, we should use n, otherwise we should use a. Uh, in this case I will not go for one line obviously. Let's say we have a boolean. Starts with vowel. And let's just write the structure. This, so this is usually how I go about that. If it starts with a vowel, okay, and then we also need something to return. Turn string, it's gonna be equal to nothing. And return, turn string. So if it starts with then we should say that return string is equal to n plus word else a plus word. Now we just need to understand 
how to write this boolean and for that we can use something like get i'm not sure if i can use it on the string but let's try it out get so this would be the way to get the first letter of the word but i'm still not sure if i can do that let's check it and it should be equal to a and like this we can we can go or it will be equal to the e or yeah i Last one is this one. Ah, oh, wait, we had already. Okay, we don't need this. <clears throat> let's make it a bit more beautiful. So let's see. So if we can use this one, then it should work. Okay, let's Google how to get the first the first letter from the string. Get the first chart. Substring, ah, not really. Chart at okay. Let's check that this method actually exists. Okay, yeah. Return the value of the character the specific index. Okay. Looks good. Okay, what's the problem? An apple. Ah, that's a good one. Starts with okay. Okay, let's let's try to write this one with a start with maybe char at somehow work doesn't work like I expect who knows Was it a okay? That's strange. Let's let's try it out actually. So let's see. The return string will be this. And let's see, word is banana. And let's debug it.
Un seconde. Ah, here we go. All right, here we go. Okay, finally. That was stupid. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Give three integers, ret return the largest. Ah, that's, that's an annoying one. Okay, so this is not difficult, but we still have to think about that. So, I think there are few options. Uh, let's see. Pull in first is largest. It's one of the possibilities, and then pull in second is largest. And then there is obviously the last one, but we will not check it. Instead, what we will do, we'll check if first is the largest one, then we'll return num1. Else, if second is the largest one, we'll return number and then we will not go to else because it does not make sense we will just return num3 so we could write here else but we don't really need it because we will go here into the return statement anyway if nothing of it is true so let's see if the first is the largest one how can we check it so definitely num1 is bigger or equal to the num2 and num1 or equal to the num3. I think the same would work for the num2. Let's see if it works. Yes. So there is no need to check the third condition because it's kind of an else condition. Let's go to the next one, passing student. Okay, so you can read it on your own, but basically if any of these two booleans is true, then we should return true. So let's see how many cases can we, what, what is the hint? If else, yeah. Okay, let's do it the simplest way. Let's say if past exam or past assignments, then return true. Else if past assignments or Come on, past projects, that's return true as well. And then else if past exam or Otherwise, return false. Mm, I'm not really sure. Yeah. So if we have true and then we have false, then it does not work. Okay, let's see. If past exam is true and this is false and false, 
Okay, so the problem here is that this one. And so yeah, the the problem is because if we have or, so if we have or, then if this is true and this is false and then everything else is false, like project for example, project is false, then we will have here true or false. We'll get for us true. And then we will return the true. So that's the problem. And what we need, we need we need here we need here an and 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 it would be true and false will always give false. Okay. So what we can also write instead is kind of this. So is that and then pack just everything into these conditions because actually all the time when you have the else if condition it's just or this is how could you solve it in one line let's go to the next one Okay, it's an interesting one. Okay, let's see. Math, third mood. And then as far as I remember, and I don't remember which, where should I put my number, where should I put the divider? Let's check if it's this way. Yeah, that's this way. Okay, so if any of them end up to the third one, let's say C, then we have to return the character C. I think the best way here is to do it with if else, of course. And we can just brute force and check every condition. So if A plus B is equal to C, then return C. Else if a plus c is equal to b, return b. Else if guess b plus c equal to a, return. We should return the character, not the B. Else if so we had A plus C, we had A plus B, we had B plus C, I think that's actually that's all. Is it? And if nothing of this true, just return nothing. So this is actually not a good style of code, so let's make it a bit more beautiful. Turn character, character, and then here we would assign it. And by default it would be nothing, it would be empty. And then if anything of the true we will change the value of the return character, but if not, then we will just return the, the character and it will be empty. Let's see, I'm not sure if... Okay, cool. I was not sure if there, there are all possibilities, just three. It's good. Okay, let's go. Given an integer return even, if the integer is even or odd, if the... Okay. Remember to use the math mode function. Okay, let's actually do it in one line again. Num2 is equal to zero. If yes, return even, then 
return out. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, let's let's solve it with the same pattern as the last time. Integer return. Let's say uh, player yeah, winner number. And let's say it's zero, and then we'll return the winner number. So if player one is equal to something and player two is equal to something. So if player one is rock and then player two is paper, then with a number will be one. Else, so if player one scissors and then paper, so it's going to be two here, going to be one. And then there, there should be definitely at least one more possibility it's gonna be one then if player one is equal to let's see paper let's say it's paper Okay, so let's do it a bit in other way. Let's say boolean player one one. How can it happen? It can happen that, for example, if we have this scenario or If we have play paper one pink uh, paper and then player two rock. That's one possibility. And then we can have Boolean player two one. And that would be the same, but vice versa. Player two, and here player one. Player two, and player one. So player two has scissors. Player one paper, then it should work. Again, the third one will not check, so let's see. Winner number is equal to one. Else, if player to one, the winner number will be two. Okay, let's see. and we have scissors so if player one is rock okay so I didn't okay that's what I thought so here we can have we can have player one is equal to what to rock 
and play two is equal to scissors. The same goes for this one. Nah, here should be like this. So let's run it. Okay. The next one, given a person's age, return the age group as a string. Infant for ages, mm, child for this, yeah for ages. Okay, this is just a lot of ifs. If and is equal to no. or if n is equal to 1 okay let's do it in the right way so let's call it h group the reason why i'm doing that is that we should actually have as less return statements as possible because this is a good pattern is equal to child if n is greater than Rate equals 2 and n is below 14, then it would be now nah, this is going to be child, and this is infant. Here we go. Then if it's within Fifteen and twenty-one. That's uh, that's confusing. Youth. Okay, let's actually make it adult. Here and save us one return, one else statement. Companion plants. Some plants are considered companion plants, they grow better when planted next to each other. Well, for the purpose of this problem, we consider the following plants to be companion, lettuce and cucumbers. Okay, okay, okay. Is companion that takes the input to strings, plant one, plant two, if the two plants are companion, return true, otherwise return false. Okay. Still a bunch of ifs. And again, is companion. You can leave it out the initialization. Return. So let's check if. Plant one is equal to this one. And plant two is equal to what to this one? I think the default here will be false. Let's copy paste it. Else if. Let's 
sandwiches and onions. Not sure how to pronounce all these vegetables in English. <laughs> and then we have onions, carrots, and then we have one more onions and tomatoes. So if I get the task right, that's what should be. No. Onions and lettuce. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see the problem is that we checked this in the strict order, but they can be submitted in another order. So, what we can do, we can just write or, and of course, we should use here the, this one. And then we can say plan two and the plan one. So, in this way, we will check both possible orders. And of course, we should use this. Okay, let's do that. It's not the perfect code. But I think it's gonna work. Or plan one. First one. And the plan two and the plan one. And again the plan two and then the plan one. Okay, now everything is failing. <laughs> Variable does not exist. Plant. Okay, let's go to the next one. Oh, leap year. I hate this exercise. Oh my god. Okay, let's see. So, first condition is that year mood four is equal to zero. That's first way but there is exception there's exception if year mode 100 is equal to 0 then We should be able to divide it by 400 as well. Okay, let's see. So, for example, we can check that year for it's equal to zero. Okay, let's let's actually write better code. So let's do it one line. Let's write with booleans. Boolean and let's say first condition is equal to zero. So it means that we can divide by four. Second condition is we should be able to divide it by 100. And by 400. And then it should be 
a first condition, so we cannot write here end, because it would mean that that every year should be should be a, should be divisible by one hundred. That means that we have to write here or. Or first condition and second condition. Okay, why not? Okay, let's call it different. Let's call it divisible by four. Even though that's not the best practice, but still. So, either it's divisible by 4, so if it's divisible by 4, and it's divisible by 100 and by 400. That's one of the possibilities. The second one, return true. The second one is it's divisible by 4 and not divisible by 100. Return true. Otherwise, return false. Let's see what is wrong in this case. Everything failed, okay? Yeah, of course. Else if. Okay, let's actually write a good code. So, the way it should be written, when we have a lot of booleans, we should always use different boolean variables to kind of make it more expressive and to kind of show what we're actually doing by our variables by naming our variables so that would be first condition for example So let's call it standard condition and that would be rare condition. Yeah, my naming is not perfect for that one, but that's also kind of artificial um, example. So let's see if it works. Everything failed. Yes. Okay. The problem with the with this tool is that it does not check the. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Okay. So this is this is pretty standard exercise for the to check if it's a prime number. I think this is the first one where we need to use loops. Yeah, loops. Here we go. <laughs> Boolean is prime, as always, and then return is prime. Now what we what we here have to do is we have to go through every number up to this number that we have. 
and integer we can start with uh, two because one we don't need to check one and we can go up to num not including num because we know that num is divided by the num and if if we'll ever find math mood so if we ever find something that divides this number then it's not prime equal to zero then is prime is equal to false so let's make the default here true and that's that's it i guess yes that's it so if we ever find such a number between two and none that the that the reminder is equal to zero then it's going to be false and otherwise we will never go into this if statement and then we will go we will go here and return the true let's go to the next one calculates and returns the sum of all numbers inclusive from 1 to n assume that n will be non-zero positive integer okay Again. sum to n is equal to zero return sum to n and here we need a for loop as well or here we can start with, uh, for example, one. Then we will go until the end and we will increase by one. Sum to n is equal sum to n plus e. Or the simple way of writing that e plus equal e. Check this one. Okay, do I have somewhere problem? Okay, I did not include the n. For some reason I thought that inclusive of course, of course, of course, okay. Yep, my fault. Okay, full name. Interesting, maybe they're in the wrong order, but this is kind of too easy task in comparison to the next one, uh, to the previous one. Last name. Let's check it. Okay, format name, or I guess that's the topic about strings, I don't know. Also kind of order here, 10 is a bit different, but anyway. Given two strings, first name and last name, return the name in the format last name, first name, in case of the name is empty, return empty path name. Okay, so string, let's call it for formatted name is equal to nothing and then return formatted name and then if if first name not equal to null and first name I think it's called length 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 yeah I think it's length okay so then it's zero okay let's actually do like this first name is not empty 
that's the one condition. The second condition would be that the second name is not empty. Second name is not empty. Ah, uh, it's called last name. Okay, English. Last name. And so if first name is not empty and last name is not empty. And the format is equal first name plus the last name then if So here's kind of not good writing, like not not, but not and not will get here the condition that first name is empty and second name is not empty, ah, last name. Not sure why I'm still calling it second name. So formatted name will be equal. So, uh, so the first name. Okay, then it should be equal to the last name. Same. The same, but here, other way around. Should be last name, should be first name. Then we can return the formatted name. This definitely can be solved a bit easier. Or ah, first name. Wait. John. Okay, so the last name should be the first one. Okay, okay, if you say so. Okay, name from email. Implement the function that takes in the input valid email address in the format. The function should extract the first name and the last name from this email address and return capitalized full name. First name, last name. Assume that. The input will always be a valid email address with both the first name and last name separated by the period. So the way I would do that, I would separate separate based on this sign on the add, and then I would take take first first string from that array from that list. So there's a method, I don't remember how it's called, but it returns uh, a list. A list. And let's take, for example, this one. So that would return list with two elements. With the first element, and that would be the second one. Element. And we know that we don't need this one, and it's always guaranteed that we will get this as the first one. So then we can take first string from that list, which would be no, which would be this. And then we can apply the same method again. And then we can get separate based on dot, and then we would get array with two elements and then we can can return the formatted name so that would be the way i would do that but i'm not sure about how this method is called so we need to google that let's say string apex mm, i think it's split 
by Let's see what people say split so it should be split where is my okay split okay let's just play regex we don't need the regex anything else i don't need the regex I need where is the split? Okay, see, I, th I think that can split by, by the character as well. But let's check it out here. So we have our string and we have let's say this one and then we have system debug return string split let's take this one This is this is what I was saying about. Okay, then it works. Then we will split it into the string list. I think it's called at in English. Email split. And then we'll have here name unformatted. It will always be saved into the first element of the array. So let's take it. Get the first element. And then I can split it again. This time by the dot, and then I can have string first name is split by dot get zero and then I can have plus name this name get the first one and what I can do in addition I can say it lowercase is it the method I hope so to lowercase and I'm kind of curious how to do that with a with the first letter here. Ah, capitalize. Is there such a such method? It would be quite cool. Capitalize. And capitalize, then should be capitalize. Change the kind with the letter, change to title. The first letter. Ah, that's cool. Okay. Flower case capitalize. So this is kind of like I'm calling a lot of methods on this string, but there is no difference between calling it here or like making another variables and calling it after that. It's the same. To return first name. And we have to include here a space. Let's see, I think
Okay, let's just check it out. I'm not sure what's happening there. Let's go to email. And now system debug. First name, space, and second name. Last name again. <laughs> List out of bound. Here, list out of bound. Why so? Okay, let's debug it. Name unformat. Okay, this is very strange to work. Is it possible that Regix uses the Dort? Ah, email, okay, it should be not email, it should be, it should be this name unformatted, of course. Yeah, no, not this time. Again. Okay, interesting. Why is it so? Split by door, what people say. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that makes sense. The reason for that is that Dort is like used in the regex, so this sign is not used in regex, so when we submit here the, the, the sign, pass here the sign, then Apex kind of understand that, okay, that we, sh we should split based on that sign. But this, this is used in the regex expression itself, so Apex tries to do some logic behind that, and the split is just getting wrong. Yeah. Here we go. First name, last name. Okay. Let's pass it back here. Don't need this, we don't need this. So it took a bit too much time actually. <laughs> okay, so let's continue with this one. We have to parse here the 24 hour format to the 12 hour presentation. Means if we get something like a 24, then we should return this AM and PM. Let's say string again formatted date. Format 
metadata. Okay, so we have we have to find the first kind of the first what is what is written here like is it eight is it twenty three and if this thing is bigger is greater than twelve then we will subtract uh, then we will subtract twelve from this integer and then we will write the pm integer first first number is equal to the time Yeah, so okay, now I got an idea how to do that. We can take the first two chars, which will be always the first two chars from the string, and this is the way we get the string representation for the first for this one. And now we have to parse it into the integer uh, value of first two characters so now we parse it into the integer and now we can check that the first number the first number is bigger than 12 then we can say that let's say here's integer parsed First number is equal to nothing. And we can say that the first number is equal to first number minus 12. We can actually declare the variable here inside. We will not use it elsewhere. So if the first number is equal to 12, then the par parsed number will be that one minus 12. And then the formatted date will be equal the first number plus the whole string the whole is their time but without but without the first first characters So I'm not sure if we can call the remove if there's such a such a method. Let's see. Remove. Okay, we can use remove start. start and then we can submit their first two char chars
then we can add the PM and else and else format the date would be the time plus AM. Okay, let's see what's wrong. Everything wrong, okay. It does not exist. Wait, char at. Okay, char at does not exist. What do you mean? Just used it. Char at. Turns the value of the character this specified index. Char, it's not chart, that's char at, of course. Illegal assignment from integer to string. What do you mean? Which which line? Line four. Eh, not line four. Error on line four. I think you mean the line 5. Okay, let's, let's have more accurate exception here. And let's say we are getting something like this. And it will be a start time. Start time is equal to that one. And debug the format date. Execute line four. How can it be line four? Now that's not possible in the line four. Why? What? The char at returns returns a string back. Really? How is it happening? Okay. 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 Ah, it returns an integer. Okay, I see. Okay, it returns an integer. <laughs> okay, that's not what I want. So I don't want the integer value. I want the string value there. Okay, let's see, is there such a method? Get the chars. Okay, I think that would be one of the possible ways to build it with get the chars. So the problem is that it returns a string, uh, an integer, that represents the character, so... Yeah, so it's wrong. It's wrong, it's wrong. I don't need the integer back, I need, I need just the letter back. Okay, one of the possibilities, I think, not to spend endless amount of time on that. Ah, it returns, okay, list of integers, that's stupid, why would someone do that? Ok, 
let's just Google get character index as string. There's something not relevant. Okay, this is actually possible. Okay. I'm sure there's a way to do it better, but let's do it like this now. So what we're gonna do, can split it. And then we'll get oops. Close it. Split. And then we'll use the get one. Okay. Now I don't really need the string. Uh, I don't really need the string value of here because we are getting strings back finally. And we need here. No, we don't need it because it's already included in the initial string. Okay, let's, let's see. Still doesn't work. Okay. Yep, then it should be included. Okay. Let's see how can we include this. So if we have here twelve, then we are getting am because we, because this condition is false. I think the best way would be just to write it separately, like else if because this is kind of special. Else, if the first number is equal to 12, then the formatted A would be still the still time, but it's going to be the PM. Okay, that's wrong. Expected 12 a.m. actually 1 a.m. How does it work? How does it work in <laughs> in America? I have no idea. So the 12 a.m. There's no no such thing as 0 a.m. Okay, but I'm actually more interested to in this one because I think this is again quite special with 12 and 0. Okay, we can just hard code it. This is fine, equal to 0, 0. Personal, and what, what's gonna be if it's a 0. It's going to be 12 a.m.
it was dead. Okay, this is a strange task. Why is it, if it's 5, why is it returning here 0? I think it's a mistake. I'm confused by... But this one should have converted expected 6.45 p.m. Actually, ah, okay, so zero is missing here. Zero is missing, okay. Okay, so if it has two digits, then if it has two digits, then we will append here one digit. Let's write it in a better way. Let's say if bent did it, then string bent digit will be empty on the initialization. And we'll just always use it here. Here we go. So that should imp no. Okay. That's why. Okay, with a bit of magic it's done, but that's been a bit of confusing task, especially because I don't, I'm don't. i not sure about all this EMPM stuff, but if you know a better solution to this one, there's obviously one, much, much better solutions, so write it in the comments, that would be great. And let's move to the next one. Okay, Fibonacci. I'm sure there are like tons of different solutions to that. But let's start with um, and see how it goes. Um, I think we should kind of hard code the first two values. Let's call the second last Fibonacci is equal to zero. And integer last Fibonacci Fibonacci is equal to 1 I think so we will start with a 1 digit 1 just because the 0 and the 1 so we already coded them and then E should go up to N. And then, of course, E plus plus. Okay, now that now the way we calculate Fibonacci is that we always have the second last. No, let's name it current. Current number. So we have a... Um, Last Fibonacci plus second last.
let's actually put it here current number okay now let's put it back so then what happens is that our second last Fibonacci it becomes the last Fibonacci and then the last Fibonacci it becomes the current number and then we return the last Fibonacci so let's see if it's gonna work yes it works as you see it sounds very difficult but actually it's pretty straightforward the only thing that you need to understand is how you calculate them um, like the actual math behind it that you take the last two numbers here like this and everything else is quite trivial so the next prime the next prime is basically calculated as obviously the next prime number from the number that we get and important that if we get for example um, let's say 30, let's say 31, which is a prime number itself, but we have to give back the 37. So we have not give back this now the same number. Okay, this is actually a good task because we can practice here nested loops and we can also solve this task with a while loop, which you wouldn't usually see in the real world, but you also don't need to calculate prime, prime numbers in the real world. So um, let's solve it with a while loop. But the first, first, until we get to the to the loops and to the logic itself, let's check if the number is actually, if we can actually perform some logic on it. And let's check if it's below one. If yes, then we'll return to. So that means that all the negative numbers or one or zero as well will be the answer will be two for that okay then now let's write the while loop itself while and i'm gonna do here something that you should never do in the real world i'm gonna write the endless loop while true so this loop it will run endless until we somehow break or stop it um, within the loop but you should never 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 do it for production and i know that i'm gonna return here num already so first what we want to do here we want to kind of write the overall structure and the break um, break if you don't know this is something that stops the loop so this is the way if we have the endless while loop this is the way how we can stop um, this loop and let's first write like overall structure how it could how it could look so so first what we will need we will need a boolean which will be kind of a break condition and let's say it's true and then we have if so if our number is prime, prime, then stop the loop. Obviously, we don't have any logic for the for this to set the, this boolean, but we will just write in a, in a minute. So what will happen here? If this will be true, then we will stop the whole this whole loop, and then we will execute the next line. So we will execute the return statement. And then we'll return to them. Um, in the real world, we would use this as a method, but for the practice, let's just calculate it here. So we already calculate. So we we'll already know how to calculate um, and how to see if the number is prime. So what we need to do is write the for loop in which we will check if the number is prime. So integer e equal to e 
less than num and e plus plus. And then here we'll use our math dot dot huh, what I'm writing <laughs> um, mode num e is equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, then is prime, then we know that it's not prime. So we are looping here, we are going over all the numbers before the num and checking if we can divide it by this number, by e. If it's equal to zero, then it means that we can divide our num by this e. And then it means that our number is not, is not prime. And then we need a break. So once we found at least one another number that we can divide, um, then we should stop completely of this for loop. And important break, it only breaks, stops the current loop, not the whole loop. So this break will stop this, this loop. And what happens if we execute this break, we'll never go within this break. Yeah, because it's always going to be false. So its prime will be false always when we break the rule here. Okay, but one thing is missing and it's num++. plus plus. So we want to increase the num all the time. And what we could do, we could increase it after we calculate the second loop or before. If we leave it after here, then then we will always first check for this loop, and then we might fall into the situation when our num, for example, is thirty one. Then we will deliver the same. Then we will go immediately into is prime, and then we will return the num. So this is not what we want in this example. Yeah, let's test it. Okay, the last the last exercise from the Apex first section. So what we need here, we, we get a sentence, for example, this one, and then we need to reverse all the words there. One of the things that we also need to consider is that we don't don't include the space here, but we do include the spaces here. And there is a wonderful method that is called split that will help us. So first, reversed as always, and then we return reversed. And here we write our logic. So definitely we'll need a loop. Let's actually say that reversed is equal to this one, to the empty string, so we never return null. And let's split our sentence. Split it is equal to sentence split. And then we split based on the white space. So we'll get a bunch of strings here in the list. And what we can do, we can start with the last one. So integer e is equal size minus one, minus one because um, we start with a zero, we start counting with a zero, so we have to go to the minus one element, and then e until it's greater than zero, and then e minus minus. Reversed will be equal the splitted dot get e and and then also we need we need to add here the white space so we have the white spaces between the words but if we do it this way then we will have one white space more in the end so instead of that. Let's check. Let's only do it for 
every i besides when the i is equal to zero. So when i is not equal to zero, we will always add the white space. When it's gonna be zero, so when when it's gonna be the last word, we will not add the white space in the end. And then we will give back the reversed. Let's see. Everything failed. Size, size does not exist. Okay, because size, we should call it on the splitted list, of course. One test failed. Let's see what's that. Okay, now that's okay. If you, if you want to give me now, then of course, first what I need to do is to check. Let's say if sentence is equal to null or if, sen if sentence, mm, let's say size is equal to zero, then there is no need for us to check or perform some logic. Let's return it back and start with the logic later. Again, sentence, okay, there is no size. Because sentence is a string, there is a size method on the list, but not on the string. So on the string, it's called length. What's wrong now? What does it mean the reverse string means null argument stays the same? Ah, so you wanna that okay. So you wanna if, if it's null, you want that a return null. Okay. Not the best way to do it, but as you wish.